Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. This is Kiro Riri Paddle, and today we're sitting down with Mr. Anime343. How are you? Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Roman, a.k.a. Mr. Anime343 of the Otaku Squad channel. Basically, the Otaku Squad is a very diverse group of anime fans. Basically, we actually like to talk about um, certain things, whether it's actually anime, whether it's video games, whether it's uh, comic books, anything nerd culture related. We can actually talk about it. It's cool. It's cool. I feel that with podcasts becoming more popular, but more voices having an equal edge when it comes to communicating that it's important for, especially within anime and gaming culture, to have opinions that aren't just part of the mainstream, but also uh, conversations that may not always be talked about. And when I came across some of the videos on your channel, I saw that you were um, definitely not counterculture, but you had really strong and interesting opinions that I would love to hear more about and to hear you expand upon uh, because as uh, some of the people will know from my channel is that I respect what anime is today, but I also remember what it used to be. And I feel that people choose not to look back to the past of what it used to be, which I personally think was the classic age. So I'm sure we'll have a great conversation about anime and other things like this. Mm-hmm. I totally agree, man. Besides, um, another thing that really actually, you know, aggravates me most, how many, like, you know, normies and stuff actually try to invade, like, you know, our, our, um, our, like, you know, escapisms with, uh, trying to push, you know, narratives, pol gender identity, unnecessary LGBT plus, like, representation. Also saying, you know, certain things like, um, oh, this really freaking just grinds my gears. You actually hear about, you know, somebody saying that uh, Mr. Popo from Dragon Ball Z is actually sort of like a gollywog doll. Now, I'm not really much into, like, you know, talking about racism or anything like that. It's just by far, like, one of the stupidest things I've ever heard in my whole entire life. Yeah, I, um, I've heard that before in the past, but, you know, sometimes people will make a, a storyline out of anything, right? And sometimes there's merit to it. A lot of times there isn't, especially in today's day and age when conversation and discourse is spread so much on social media platforms. And uh, we'll definitely discuss that. But tell the viewers, how did you discover anime? Well, basically, my uh, love for anime started back when I was only maybe about like um, seven years old. Back when uh, Toonami was actually playing on at four o'clock in the afternoon. Now, I was, I'm actually a 90s kid. And basically... I've actually had a lot going through my life with an abusive mm -hmm. stepdad, freaking being bullied at school and all that stuff. I actually never really had many friends, but when when I was watching anime, I always pictured like, you know, all the anime characters as like my friends and stuff like that. And that really got me through some hardships. And then, you know, as I got older, I got into some of the more mature stuff. Because basically, how I see it, it's just like a domino effect. Once you actually start doing something, then it's all it's just gonna go, it's just gonna go toppling over one after another, like a tower, like a series of dominoes, just going tick 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 tick, just like that. I take it that you've been a fan since you were seven years old. You didn't take any breaks in between, or maybe stick with only manga for a while, ignoring what's happening with anime. Uh, no. I've been into anime, you know, I've actually been into, like, you know, some of the more darker stuff. Like, um, I've actually just actually watched uh, Redo a Healer. And basically, one of my one of my former friends called Yakuza Western Killer, he actually decided to actually, you know, have this, like, um, whole vendetta against me about, um, you know, me saying that uh, being an anime fan is actually what's wrong with the, the world today because, you know, Anime is misogynistic, it's sexist, it's racist, and all this whole freaking other crap. And he doesn't even prove anything. He just actually made this false accusations against me. Yeah, and, um, I, I, I guess that's a little bit of that anti-tuber drama. I did uh, see some videos, and I think I saw maybe one of his where he was in response to something you had said. And uh, I don't know, it's an interesting dialogue you two have. Yeah, it's just really stupid that people actually would go and um, 
create like a lie about someone else. Also, there are too many like, you know, bigger any tubers that are willing to actually like um, per se, like uh, the anime man, Giguk, Sea Dog, all these other ones for Neverworld. Don't get me wrong. Those guys, they don't really care about the anime genre itself. I care about anime and I'm actually, you know, close to 200 subscribers. I'm actually, in fact, 10 away from hitting 200 on my YouTube channel. That's good. That's good. Uh, you know, we'll talk about some of the integrity about uh, AniTubers on this platform. I've spoken with some other creators about that too. But um, let's talk about how you got onto YouTube and how you started creating content. What brought you to making anime content? Were you doing anything on YouTube beforehand? Was this a calling that you had? Well, basically, it all started, you know, with my like take on gatekeeping and stuff. And this actually happened shortly after um, the Kyo Annie incident. And basically, I wanted to actually, you know, give my voice to the people, to like the real fans, the people that are willing to actually stand up and actually prove something that, you know, they belong. Well, basically, I'm willing to actually give you guys that voice because I'm actually trying to be a voice of the voiceless. We all need to actually have like, you know, something we actually show appreciation for. I appreciate anime. Anime has always been a part of my life, okay? It's always been a part of me. I mean, <laughs> why do you think I actually wear this Ahi Gao shirt for? Because I actually love actually showing my love and appreciation for like even the more mature anime, like hentai and stuff. And I'll admit it, I actually love hentai. And people actually say that you're actually, you know, sexualizing minors and stuff like that no 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 fiction and reality fiction and reality there is no correlation i've heard that argument before and i can see both sides from it definitely because it's a slippery slope especially when you're taking something that is traditionally seen as okay in its native country but then you have a lot of uh fans in the uk and north america who they haven't grown up in that environment so their point of view is going to be skewed and uh that, that that's something I, I want to talk about as well we'll come to that but um you were talking about like doing uh, videos where you're talking about gatekeeping and anime and you've also on your channel done reviews for not just uh, manga but comic books as well you've done a lot of streams um voice calls with people within the community i guess through your discord uh, how did you start cultivating such an audience that's devoted to your content so quickly some people for years talk about anime they can't get a community but you seem to be starting off pretty well well basically you know here's the thing people should actually know that there's a little secret you need to actually be true to your, to who you are and you know what you do you can be your own worst enemy, okay? Now, what I'm going to say here is I've been true to anime. I've always actually treated it with respect. I always treat my friends and all my followers with respect and treat them as human beings because basically there's an old saying, respect is earned, never given. Like basically, if you respect me, then I'll, I'll give you my respect in return. It's actually a two-way street. Respect and disrespect can go either way. If you actually are mean and nasty to me, I'll just actually walk away. But if you actually treat me with respect, then basically you'll have a friend in me. Simple as that. So let's build off of that. If that's the case, and I know that's definitely how you feel and, and how you operate with your content because you've been very thankful and you've given shout outs to your community, which a lot of... Uh, content creators don't do unless they're doing it for the views you know that they're asking people to subscribe to their channel but you're just uh, no, you're no, 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 no 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 i'm i am very humble about the people that have actually given me a voice whether it's actually otaku tycoon whether it's actually my good friend jay senpai x4 whether it's actually you know whoever okay i even actually gave a shout out to like you know a VTuber by the name of Alice D. Alucard. And she's actually like a small VTuber. And basically, she actually does some very little content as well. And, you know, she's 
I mean, heck, I can even give a shout out to Project Melody, okay? She might be an adult VTuber and stuff like that. And I really enjoy the content and the hustle she does. But here's the thing. People are always making these lies about her that, you know, she's actually trying to bring in kids or she's actually a dude in disguise of a, of a female VTuber. But, you know, Project Melody is the character that she is, okay? People should understand that if you're going to actually do something, you actually have to stay loyal and honest to the fans, okay? Heck, I'm even working on a on an indie comic, which is kind of like a mix between, it's like a magical girl story. And I wanted to actually do this for my fans as a way to actually say, thank you for actually, you know, doing what you do. I want to get that to them and say, you know, this is actually a comic that I actually do as a love letter to Japan and all that, you know, anime has actually done for me. Okay, I see. Uh, yeah, you definitely seem that you're quite ambitious with the content that you're making and with the collaborations that you have with people within the community. Uh, as I was uh, saying, like it, it seems like you, you're you very well versed in not just anime and anitube, but also just YouTube in general and what it means to create good working relationships and friendships with people through the internet. What has your experience creating on you on YouTube been like so far? And have your views on any content creators changed since you've been contributing to the scene? Well, to tell you the truth, basically, I'm just thankful for those who have actually followed me and, you know, were actually, you know, appreciative of the work that I do. But I want to actually just simply say that, you know, without my fans or without my friends or my followers, I want to be here, you know, doing this with you and, you know, giving my voice to the anime, the anime community, as for some of like the other anti-tubers per se, I mean, I, I have nothing against like uh, Lost Paws or like you know others that actually truly like you know respect the um, the anime fandom, but those who actually just you know forget their like you know their fan base treats them like cash cows like Mother's Basement. Oh that's a personal gripe or like uh, freaking the anime man, like I've mentioned before, Sea Dog, Gigak, all these other people that actually, you know, try to use their, like, their platform as like a way to actually, you know, elevate themselves and get a bigger paycheck. That freaking just, you know, really, that really just burns my backside straight up. Okay, so let's, talk about anti-tubers then we can talk about the small the medium and the large anti-tubers but let's go off of what you were just saying in our community there are people who like giga they like c dog va maybe they've been following them for some time maybe they prefer their more mainstream slant i'm impartial to some of their content i've watched trash taste and while not every episode is my favorite i think that the direction they're going in can possibly be adopted by other people within the community to take a more puritan form of being an anime fan those are views that have been shared by others within the community as well what do you think about the content the big anti-tubers are creating, truthfully? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, I mean, basically without them, we wouldn't actually be here. And I really don't have anything against them, per se. I just don't really like them. Also, I prefer, you know, being a person that actually is loyal and true to the, um, true to the fan base along with the, the fandoms that actually made, you know, all of this possible. But we got to actually be a little more open to, like, other things outside of, like, mainstream. You need, you know, broaden your horizons a little bit. You know, don't just actually settle on one thing and just say, oh, I'm good. No, 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 no. There's a vast sea out there. You need to explore deeper options. Heck, I've actually gave my thoughts about, like, Redo a Healer all 12 episodes on my channel, okay? I mean, I actually still stand by what I say about Redo a Healer. I really enjoy the anime. Nobody should actually, you know, have anything against it. I can totally understand if you disagree with me, that's fine. That th Those are just my opinions. 
everybody should actually have a right to actually, you know, have a different opinion of what, you know, a person is saying. If you don't like something, just walk away from it. You don't have to give it any mind. You don't need to go out of your way and try to cancel it because, oh, this is offensive. We need to actually just put this, we need to actually put this in the ground and walk away from it. Like, nothing ever happened. <sighs> do, you, do you feel that because Redo of a Healer has gotten a mostly negative uh, response from the Anitube community that is based on trying to adhere to what the mainstream would want to see. For a lot of people, Redo of a Healer has questionable content. For some people, they absolutely love it because it's like a dark fantasy along the lines of what we've seen in Game of Thrones and other more modern series where you're taking risk and you're telling an, a somewhat different story or an interesting story. But for a lot of the anti-tubers, they're just trying to tear it down. Do you think that's the direction they're going to be going? Just going with whatever the mainstream feels is acceptable and making that content to adhere to it? Okay, I am going to keep this a buck fifty here. Basically, let me just actually be completely blunt with you. These people trying to cancel Redo of Hitler or like the Rising of the Shield Arrow is another so called controversial and I'm using air quotes on this because you know it's actually controversial because you know the normies and the mainstream media they just actually love to poke, you know, their gender identity politics and unnecessary LGD plus representation into, you know, whatever they want, because let's just admit it. The freaking mainstream, like, news outlets, like Anime News Network, CBR, or, like, you know, any other sites, they're just actually, you know, trying to play the so-called, you know, the holier-than-thou type narrative. I'm using air quotes on holier than now. So um, let me just actually be blunt with you as well here. We should actually have a right to actually enjoy much more darker content like Akira, whether it's actually redo a healer, basically anything outside the mainstream, because basically mainstream is just absolutely vanilla. It's just like bland. I prefer, you know, it's like I prefer spicy food. You know, anything that actually just burns my tongue and just makes it, you know, oh, makes it, you know, freaking makes it more wonderful and delicious. Do you think that we're going to get a mainstream series that pushes the button like Redo or even like Goblin Slayer or series like that, but is actually something that's accepted by the mainstream? Maybe it's the quality of the story, or maybe it's written by an author that is already pre-established in, in mangaka circles. It's only a matter of time, in my opinion, but what do you personally think? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, um, I'm going to have to say I doubt it, because basically, if it actually ever actually comes out and, you know, people start talking about it, I know I'll talk about it because, you know, I'm much more into the darker stuff. I mean... I, back when I was a kid, my sisters forced me to watch Sailor Moon, and basically, I kind of felt a little cheesy at first watching Sailor Moon, because I do like Magical Girls, and I never really got into it at first, until I got older, around 13. That's when I started watching, like, you know, the VHS version of uh, Sailor Moon R, and that's how I pretty much got into, like, Magical Girls. I mean, I've even... I even actually have um, Puella Magia Madoka Magica off the omnibus of it. Hang on, just a second. I gotta show it to you so that way I can prove to you guys that Timber. Ta da! There's my proof. That's fact, cool. I've... That's actually really cool. I'm a big Madoka fan. Yeah, in fact, I've also got. Um, a couple of light novels, and I also got the anime version of a uh, Magical Girl Raising Project. A friend of mine by the name of Revna, she's actually a uh, transgender VTuber. She actually got me into this, and uh, there's a uh, this is book two, and this is book one, and of course I also have the complete series. Wow, you're. You're definitely quite the fan. That's actually really cool. 
uh, I, I do want to talk about your collection, actually, and not only your posters, but your DVDs and stuff. But um, l let's not uh, lose this topic. With okay. with with what AniTubers are making in the mainstream and, and a lot of their content now going into a more generic sort of, uh, this is a YouTube thumbnail that will definitely work. This is the kind of YouTube content that will definitely work. It's feeling less anime-centric and more anime-adjacent. Do you think that's going to be the norm for AniTubers going forward? Or will we maybe see one of the smaller AniTubers rise to the top with more anime-focused content? Like I was saying earlier, more Puritan content. Oh, I hope to God it doesn't actually lead to pur puritanical content. Because basically, Puritans can, are just, you know, by far the worst buzz kills ever. Okay? I'm going to simply say it. Puritans equal just absolute destruction of entertainment. This is how we've actually been losing the freaking culture war for, for Pete's sakes. Basically, I'm actually trying to keep this like, you know, family friendly if possible. I don't know if you're going to be, you know, bleeping out some of the things, but I'm trying to actually, you know, retain any you language. Say, speak how you want. You, you can swear. It's okay. Okay. But this whole fucking stupid ass bullshit that's been going around about you know this whole need to actually you know you know censor everything because it goes against their fucking agendas is just absolutely stupid if you ask me yeah um uh, some people would say that from comedy to north american comics and even to some of the anime that we're getting uh, even the content creators within anime fields they're the ones that are now censoring their content or they're whitewashing their content or in the sense that it's like we can't talk about the edgy things anymore because everyone and their mother is a fan of anime you can go on netflix and watch a hundred different anime series so maybe it would do my channel a, a disservice if i started talking about non-mainstream anime non-mainstream manga and it just seems so shonen centric it seems so happy go lucky and guys look at me youtube content and th it, there's that place for that you know i'm not saying that sort of content is bad and i don't consume it but when the tastemakers within your community are making 90 percent that sort of content and their word is seen as god when it comes to this amazing art form this art medium that to me is a little questionable definitely uh, I, I don't blame you there one bit. I mean, look look at how I'm doing. Basically, I love pushing the envelope about, like, you know, showing off some of the more darker stuff, like, you know, the more edgy side of things. I mean, don't get me wrong. I actually love the edgy stuff, okay? I mean, just have some fan service for pizza, for fuck's sakes. Basically... If you're just going to make things vanilla and bland as hell, then it's just going to be, you know, one of the another one of the generic, like, you know, Loki's, the Black Widows, the Ghostbusters 2016s, the freaking, you know, the cookie cutter woke garbage that we've been getting for so many years. That crap just needs to freaking just die. Some people would say that there is a pushback. In mainstream Hollywood, more people are looking at talk show hosts as relics of the past, and they're going to podcasts where they have people who aren't being bought out by corporations. And even though a bit of that attitude has seeped into YouTube, uh, like I, I personally don't think there's anything wrong with a sponsor. You know, if it means like helping your channel to grow, if it's something you believe in, absolutely, right? Like why not be able to take your hobby into a career, whether part-time or what you want to do for a long period of time. But it seems like some of these channels, I'm watching them and it's like the anime version of Ellen and they're the kind of stuff that they're telling us it's not like it's not etchy they're they're mentioning etchy as a joke they're mentioning hentai as a joke and it's like to some people it's not a joke i like i said i'm, I'm very i understand why certain content is made but i also question about the integrity of some of these creators especially when 90 percent of the content they make today is very different from what they were making all of the time just a few years ago when anime wasn't as big as it was and also another thing, speaking of podcasts, I, have, I even actually have a podcast of my own. It's called Talking Anime with Mr. Anime 343. Basically, just a few days ago, I've actually 
sat down with my good friend Dionysus Sama, along with another YouTuber by the name of Zeros Void. And we actually sat down and we talked about, you know, defending Lolicons and Shotokans. Now, basically, I'm a believer that, you know, fictionalized kids are just, you know, lines on paper. That's our argument. They have no correlation to real kids whatsoever. And I've also added a couple of, like, you know, fundraising links to help these actual kids being in trouble with, like, you know, human trafficking, you know, child abuse, like I've been through. I mean, I've been through some physical child abuse as a kid with my stepdad and all. But, you know, without him or, you know, all this happening to me, I never would have gotten into anime. And that's why I've actually been into anime before. It's mm -hmm. actually, you know, one, one of my happinesses. So did you use anime as a sort of coping tool with some of the trauma that you were experiencing when you were younger? Yes. Yes, I did. Do you feel that you sought it out or was it something that found you? Some people say that the hobby found them in their darkest point in time. Basically, it's kind of like, you know, a, it's kind of like both because basically I did find it and it actually helped like mend some of the wounds that have happened to me. And I always actually had like, you know, as a kid, I always actually dreamt of actually going on, you know, some fun adventures with all these like anime characters. Heck, I've even actually worked on a fan fiction where I was talking about like if uh, actual humans actually fought alongside anime characters in a dystopian world, like, you know, if anime characters came into our world and we actually had to fight alongside them, you know, uh, in the time of need when, like, anime became illegal and stuff like that through, like, you know, a religious cultist, like, organization called the Dawn of Fear. And I just actually really need to get back into writing that story again. You have a number of projects that you're working on, and I'm interested in hearing about them, and especially your fanfic. I'm someone who grew up on fanfics alongside anime, so I definitely have a, a soft spot for them. But okay. let's just finish up on that one topic about some of the more, like what people would say is questionable content in anime. I know that there has been a lot of talk recently about Dragon Maid, I, I try to see everything from as many sides as possible. I feel some people just don't like Dragon Maid and they're just trying to find a reason why they don't like it. I don't like all isekai, but I'm not going to try and like nitpick at the content or even the character design of an isekai in order to tear it down. But I feel that's what Twitter has done a number of times with Dragon Maid. Uh, what's your opinion on the fan reaction to Echi, to uh, depictions of Lolly, Shoda characters, and things like that. I'm just going to be blunt as hell about this. So I suggest that, you know, everybody, including the idiots in the back, for them to listen up. Because I'm only going to say this just once. Anime is actually meant to actually be enjoyed by the fans. It is made for the fans. If you don't like something, you can just walk away, just ignore the issue, don't freaking just push your biases onto something, expect somebody to actually, you know, just listen to you, expect that they are right. That's the thing. People should understand that we prefer watching something and supporting it without people trying to push this narrative that you know we're the bad guys we're what's wrong with society today and don't even get me started on like you know the freaking promos for you know trying to buy back manga you know to support american comic companies because american comics actually just pushed away their fan base so they can actually chase after the phantom audience <sighs> So do you believe that comics, anime, all of this nerd culture, as a lot of people would put it, do you think that it's now politically driven, uh, uh, fiscally driven, and the agendas that fit the narrative is what's going to dictate the kind of content that we, we receive? 
Or do you think that there may be some sort of pushback eventually where the fans will say, hey, we enjoy all sorts of content, not just what's reflective of what we see on certain news channels or what's trending on Twitter. Give us everything and we'll let certain groups enjoy it and the other groups who don't enjoy it, they can go to the side. Yeah, I'm actually all for the latter though, because you know how I see it, people should understand that if you don't like something, you can just walk away from it. Don't actually take time out of your busy schedule and just try to freaking, you know, go on social media, freaking throw out a bunch of watered down buzzwords, try to freaking cancel something because it goes against your freaking policies. Guys, it's just stupid if you ask me. People should actually understand that we as people should actually have a right to enjoy something without, you know, somebody trying to cancel someone all because they actually disagreed with their opinions. That's not going to fly with me, okay? Let's talk a little bit about neuralities. There's a lot of controversy right now happening with neuralities, and it's a hot topic subject, but to be honest, I haven't really gotten caught up with it. And while I do know and I'm aware about what all the topics are, can you give me your point of view, how you see it, and how you see Neuralities going forward with the content that they'll be making, especially with this public backlash? Basically, I've already done like a, a personal price video about um, Neuralities. I really don't like the woman. She's actually just so freaking feminist driven about, you know, her personal points of view. And she always actually thinks that, you know, if you actually loot a lowly, then you should go to jail. Or if you loot a uh, Shota, then, you know, that's okay. It's actually the one or the other type of situation. You see, I can't really stand if, if, it, if you're going to loot like an underage anime girl, and that's actually problematic. Or if you loot an underage anime boy, that's actually okay. It's the double standards. I can't stand that. Basically, she actually is, like, you know, okay with looting, like, um, freaking Deku of Bakugo. Now, my friend D&D Girl actually says that, you know, that's, like, you know, one of the most horrific ships that has ever been made possible. Because Bakugo has always been toxic to Deku. Like, it's just stupid. And putting them in a relationship, that's actually just not going to end well. Do you think Neuralities comes from the era of fanfics where you would just take any characters and combine them into a story and that's now your online internet identity? I actually would not want to be going down that route. Let's just say. I think there's value in the conversation with what Neuralities is making, but I can't have too much of an opinion on the topic just because I haven't invested myself to it. And to be honest, I find some of the reactions a little ridiculous. Like, it shouldn't take you like three to five hours to have a reaction video to like a 40 minute video or something. Like, to me, that just seems really self indulgent. But at the same time, I, I do know that people do feel strongly about these topics. And the thing is, now that anime is more mainstream, and more people are more comfortable with expressing themselves and everyone has an equal platform more or less you are going to get a lot more people creating content that is going to be uh, causing a big uproar within the community and to be honest I, I i don't think that's a terrible thing i would just like to see better opinions i totally agree i mean no offense i would love to actually see other people try this as well i mean heck if I'm actually going to be, you know, shooting up as a uh, small-time YouTuber, I always love to actually share my personal thoughts and opinions about anime. I always actually, you know, I always actually have, like, you know, people of color come into my, come into my uh, live streams. Heck, I'm very approachable. In fact, you know, just saying that, you know, I actually don't agree with you doesn't make me an istifo, doesn't make me alt-right. I, I don't really vote anyway. I'm apolitical, and basically, politics should just be left out of everything, okay? Straight up. I think some people see politics as a means of extending their belief system that they're not able to articulate necessarily well, but they find the group or the expressions or the slogans that 
grasp as much as possible and they run with it. And that's why you have so many varying degrees of people who are feminist or people who, who stand for certain rights and certain activism groups. And I, I'm happy that there is definitely more representation out there. And I'm happy that there are more people speaking up against the travesties of them socially. But I also think that when you have it start like infiltrating things like anime and anime content creation you're missing the point i i remember people getting upset on twitter because the cuticle for a small character in attack on titan wasn't illustrated properly and they were going on about all of these different things about how like oh this is terrible black people have been uh, misrepresented in anime for so long and it's like and, and like this kind of brings up the whole thing you were mentioning with mr popo i don't believe that animators in a different country that are already going through so much stress with all of the work that's being put on their on their table and the fact that the pay doesn't compensate for the amount of effort and time that they have to put in i don't think they are conspiring about doing something that's going to upset black people overseas I, I don't I don't think they're creating content that they will be like, oh, I can't wait for people in America to make questionable videos about this lolly girl who's actually 900 years old. Like, it's not that calculated. It's it's not that planned. And it's really ridiculous that we have people who are doing all of these long essay style videos about this. It's like you're creating identity politics and you're creating this discourse within the AniTube anime content creation community for what? because you can articulate yourself better in real life. Like, uh, and who am I to tell people how to believe in things? But at the same time, I know anime has always been around. I grew up on anime from the 90s. Politics has always been around. The internet has been around for quite some time. These conversations weren't coming up before. The fact that they're coming up now, I can't help but feel that they're a little bit misguided. Exactly, but here's the thing. People should actually have a right to actually, you know, separate, you know, politics from other stuff like you know from you know we've actually seen like tabletop rpgs like D, &D actually getting attacked because you know feminists and uh, other types of like puritanists actually believe that D, D is actually you know pushing you know satanism and stuff like that oh no 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 that's not gonna fly with me dude basically if you're going to force your opinions onto something, then you could just actually, you could just actually go preach to someone else. Don't go preaching it to us because we do not care. We do not care about your politics. We do not care about what you personally think. We don't care what your stance is on who you voted for. That's your personal business. Just leave us to our, leave us to our vices. Do you think there will ever be a place for identity politics and a commentary on the current state of society in anime and manga? No, I do not believe that there is any because I, for one, do not want any like gender identity or LGBT plus representation being forced down people's throats because, you know, with the way, way that morality does it. That is something I draw the line on, okay? I do not want to hear about what you stand for, what your gender is. Basically, this is why feminists actually... This is why hiring people like uh, DJ Kirkland to actually go into, like, uh, biz media. That was the biggest mistake in human history, if you ask me. He's actually a censorship advocate, and he actually made a hot take back in 2016 saying that, you know, there's LGB plus suffering happening in Japan, which he does not prove, okay? If you're going to prove something, if you're going to prove a point, back it up. Prove to us that this is happening. Now, if it was the Middle East, I could actually totally see that happen. But Japan, that's a huge X to doubt, doubt for me. I'm of the belief that maybe if it's done right now, there will be agendas driven behind it. And I say this as someone who's bitter because of a lot of the BLM movements. And they, a lot of them ended up becoming memes. So a little bit of, of me is bitter and jaded. But I'm not bitter and jaded to groups of people. I think at some point in time, there will definitely be an honest space where there are LGBTQ creators within this community. And 
I do believe that they will have a voice that it, you can tell isn't just sponsored for the month because this is what companies are trying to invest in. And it's not just done for the views and the clickbait. As we've seen, uh, I've seen plenty of people who make videos about uh, a reflection of the current state of society in anime that was done 15 years ago, confusingly enough. But then in their Discord, all their attitude is very different. So I, I can tell what they're doing is for the views and for the content. That to me is ridiculous. But then again, anti-tubers. I feel like there are a lot of anti-tubers that will do anything to grow within a scene. And if it means that they're just going to say things that get others upset, that's what they're going to do. And I want you to actually expand on that a little bit. You mentioned earlier that a former friend of yours was creating videos that was disparaging you. Can you talk about that a little bit if you're all right? Yeah, basically, he okay. Yakuza Western Killer actually made, like, you know, this uh, fake exposed video on me about, like, uh, me liking Redo a Healer. And we've actually been, you know, me and my friends over on the Council of Weeps, which is actually, like, our little Twitter group where we actually would get together and, you know, talk about business and stuff like that. But here's the thing. When, when we actually exposed him for what he is, a fake anime fan and a weeb guilt... And of course, you know, he actually kept making, you know, videos about me saying that I'm I'm the one who fired the first shot and stuff like that. But that's not true. He doesn't actually prove that I did anything wrong. All I was simply saying is I was defending, you know, Redo a Healer because the mangaka, Rui Sukio, actually was a, was a sexual assault victim. Even though he's a dude, Men can actually be sexually assaulted just as much as women do. But if it's actually a man, they actually have to stay silent about it. But if it's a woman, then by far, you know, the freaking, the person that actually committed the crime should actually, you know, be uh, dragged through the, through the mud. And you say this coming from a place of someone who has been hurt so i i definitely think there's weight with your words do you think it's possible he's making these videos just for the drama clicks or is he just pushing a button because he has some sort of like underlying issue with you and the content you make yeah and also he said that he actually want to quote unsubscribe for me and stuff like that with his like you know latest um video and stuff but you know that's just the thing He's actually just, you know, a manipulative liar and he's a bully because he's got like, you know, over 800 followers and I'm close to 200 and I'm thankful for my 200, for my close to 200 subscribers. Okay. If I can actually grow, no matter what, I am always going to stand for my fans and, you know, being honest with the uh, anime community and try to prove that, you know, we as like you know anime fans are human beings and not these monsters that you know the uh, social media puritans or the social justice weirdos as like jeremy for geese and gamers would put it make us out to be do you think we'll ever have the label of weirdos or quirky individuals distinguish from from us so, like i feel that as an anime fan there's no reason why people should look at us as you know odd or strange but for some people that's still the narrative even today in 2021 yeah exactly but you know i prefer you know being an otaku a weeb those are badges of honor for me i mean for us as anime fans basically they actually might think we're actually weirdos, we're actually, you know, nerds, we're all this and that, but at the end of the day, we're still human beings. We don't care what you label us, as long as we're actually, you know, doing what we love and not harming anybody or ourselves, let us do us. I want to talk about some of the popular genres in anime culture today. Shonen is bigger than it has ever been, and Shonen has produced a lot of great work, a lot of work that maybe I don't really like too much, but a lot of interesting takes on the tropes that we've grown up on. 
do you think that newer newer series like my hero jujitsu kaisen demon slayer promise neverland is this a reflection of how people like to watch anime a shorter series no filler seasonal with quick pacing do you think we'll ever see a comeback of older shonen that develops a character over several seasons that has a lot of filler even if it's good or bad filler well, basically, that's just the thing. I, I'm not really much into the shonen genre because basically shonen just like takes forever. I mean, look at One Piece. It's still going on. It's kind of ridiculous because basically sooner or later, something has to come to an end. That's why I usually prefer shorter, more like, you know, mature stuff because basically once you're actually done with this series, you can move on to another one. It's my uh, flow. I mean, I don't think he gets shown in or anything like that. It, if it actually just keeps dragging on and on and on and on, then I, I just lose it. Can shows like Madoka, Little Witch Academia, basically Magical Girl, romantic comedies, shoujos, can they make a strong comeback? like how they were once in the 90s and early 2000s, or is that a genre that's best left to the classics? Well, basically, you know, you always got to respect the classics. No offense, but here's the thing. People should actually, you know, appreciate and enjoy something just because, you know, they're actually, you know, enjoying, enjoying like, whatever it is they're enjoying, whether it's actually, like, you know, shojo, whether it's seinen, yaoi, yuri, it doesn't matter. If it, if they actually enjoy it, more power to them. I actually prefer enjoying something. If I actually want to sit down and enjoy it, I'll just sit down and enjoy it. Simple as that. Is anime better today? Or was it better during the time of home videos, OVAs, and long-running shonen series? I usually prefer, like, you know, the older stuff because basically, you know, it's actually much more to, like, you know, my nostalgia and stuff. I mean, I usually prefer, like, the older type anime over, like, the newer stuff because, you know, with the newer stuff, it's becoming, like, you know, more generic and more, you know, cookie-cutter per se. Basically, where's the fun in, you know, having some darkness like uh, freaking, like, um, like Redo a Healer, for instance? Where's the fun in that? What other projects, content are you working on? And also, please tell us a little bit about your podcast, which you were talking about earlier. Okay, so my Talking Anime with Mr. Enemy 343 podcast, not only do I talk about anime, that's actually kind of like, you know, the central pillar to actually hold everything up. I also talk about comic books. I also talk about video games. I also talk about like you know, movies, TV shows, anything that doesn't actually push any like uh, politics or religion or anything like that. And I just actually really want to give like a special space to those, you know, who want to actually have an escape from, you know, all the uh, nonsense of, uh, gender identity, LGD plus, you know, being shut down their throats. I don't push that stuff, okay? What I do is I usually like to actually, you know, give my opinions into a deeper thought. So that way, I actually give my fans something to enjoy, something to listen to. And I might have a small, like, community, but I hope to actually grow one day. And, you know, I'm not looking to actually be like the next joe rogan per se on that topic speaking of joe rogan where do you see your channel two years from now well basically what i see with my channel i'm gonna still be an anime fan i'm still gonna voice my opinions about anime and manga because basically i actually still hold three goals of my channel one help heal the anime community or rebuild it through positive vibes. I know that's a little easier said than done, but by breaking hell or high water, I will make that happen. Two, 
to actually have a fan base that I can be proud of and know that I had their backs and they have mine. And three, have fun with the videos that I create. I mean, basically, I enjoy making content for my fans. So that way, whether I'm actually, you know, going through like a uh, really spicy uh, hentai dojin or something like that during my live streams, I mean, that's where, you know, all the fun happens. I usually love giving my fans like, you know, the, um, the fan service because that really spices up the content. And whatever you're doing, it's definitely working because your channel is growing steadily. And by the looks of it, you have a great community of people who are passionate anime fans. And even though opinions do differ across different groups and demographics of people, at the end of the day, we all love anime. And I feel like if we just kind of come to some understandings that this is a very wide ranging genre that has more anime today being made at, than at any point in time, it's it's good to understand that we can come together despite our differences not force our opinions on one another but be open about sharing who we are and our belief systems and i think when we have that sort of camaraderie the community will be a much better place than it currently is especially within the anime content creation field most definitely because you know how i see it we should actually let our escapisms tell us who we are now I'm actually all for, like, you know, gatekeeping and stuff. I mean, that's what the first video I've actually did was. I actually talked about gatekeeping and, like, you know, how uh, the Kyo Annie incident actually just really was, like, a stab in the heart to me. Because, basically, for me, Kyo Annie was the equivalent of 9-11 all over again. Because, basically, as an anime fan, I felt really torn. And, you know, these Puritans... They were praising the arsonist of all people because they couldn't stand anime being created in Japan. Yeah, wild shit, man. For real, wild. Strange what some fans will put all of their effort into getting angry over, but it is what it is. Do you have yeah. any recommendations, shows, anime, comics, what have you? Okay. Anime-wise, I would suggest checking out Black Lagoon. Basically, that one's my personal... That's my alpha choice right there. I mean, I also like Kill a Kill. I also enjoy, like, um, you know, anything with the violence and nudity in it. Because I'm actually a huge violent type of person. You know, I also love, like, you know, anything that actually really piques my interest. Whether, it, whether it's actually anime whether it's hentai whether it's manga i've always been a huge like you know fan of the anime genre itself the only thing i don't really do is like hello kitty because i really don't consider hello kitty as like you know anime <laughs> that, that 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 nails on a chalkboard for me that's that's freaking taboo thank you this was a very interesting interview. It was great to have you on. I came across your content as a small creator, but I feel that if you keep on doing what you do, you're going to make waves in this scene. And you're going to cause a lot of interesting conversations to come up, but the way that you appreciate your fans and the way that you appreciate the medium of anime, I definitely think that there are going to be a lot of great videos, great content that you're going to produce down the road. And I am looking forward to our paths crossing again because I feel that uh, you are a, a, a real anime fan and it's good to talk to real anime fans. Not that I have anything against new anime fans, but I am very grateful for the time that we spent talking about anime. I really appreciate oh, you coming onto the show. Mm -hmm. Well, I usually end my videos just like this. Well, guys, it's actually been super fun. I really enjoyed, you know, making this content with you. Please check out my, uh, please check out my uh, channel, Mr. Anime Three Four Three. Check out my podcast, Talking Anime Mr. Anime Three Four Three. You can also follow me on Twitter at Mr. Anime Three Four Three, along with Facebook at Roman Scott Rideout. And of course, as always, just remember these three things, guys. Respect the waifus, enjoy your fandoms, anime is freedom. And until the next one, this is Mr. Anime343 saying, sign out, everyone. This was Kiro Riri Paddle. Thank you guys for coming by. Take care, y'all.